So hey guys, welcome to another Nostalgia Run And today we're not doing a raid, today we're doing static halls In the Orkandoom, in the old Outland Now, this dungeon is important for me for a couple of things And I have very good memories as well So let's go in, we're gonna do the heroic version Now, in the Burning Crusade, tanks were still very scarce and it was still fairly difficult to get a tank okay so you had to befriend many tanks in order to be able to do heroic dungeons and raids now me as a tank I would run through this dungeon pretty much every day either for druids which I will talk about later once we get to the second boss or just people trying to get justice um, badges for gear so I would run this dungeon a lot, a lot, a lot, okay, about three billion times throughout the Burning Crusade. <coughs> now this dungeon was fairly difficult, it had some nasty, nasty packs with crowd control and just nasty abilities that did a lot of damage and just chain pulling was a big issue here. You had to be really careful, tank was just up front, people were at the back because if you create any sort of pull aggro as a DPS or a healer, you are dead okay, in this dungeon. It was just tough as nails up until, I don't know, like Black Temple and Sunbow where people really overgeared it and where it was actually possible to hold aggro or multiple mobs very easily as a tank. So this first group, you know, once again, have to be careful because those two are patrolling over there. So what I would do as a warrior, I, was, I would pull out my gun, I would stand over here, I would shoot them, and then we would kill them somewhere around here. Okay, we go around the corner, once again, you have to pull those before you pull those two. Now, that would be kind of nasty if you pulled all four of them at the same time, that wouldn't really work. Another pull over here was me standing here, shooting my gun through there. I remember this very well, because in the Burning Crusade, as a tank, you really had to know your pulls. How you pull stuff, how much stuff you pull, and all of this stuff. What the dudes are doing, which one should have a skull above its head, which one should get sheeped, and all that stuff. Over here, once again, shoot my gun, run around the corner, let them come around, and then thunderclap. And then start doing shield blocks and stuff. Now, from now on, we're actually going to skip most of this room. Because as you can see, there's a lot of dudes in here. So we're going to run around here. And we're going to shoot that guy with the gun. We're going to run behind here. Because this is the safest spot if you get mind controlled or fear. Or I don't remember quite what it was. Like, it was either mind control or fear because I remember people running off and pulling you know, stuff you're not supposed to pull. Then you were able to sneak through here if I remember correctly. I don't think you had to pull that guy. You have to be careful around this Dark Hawk because you know, obviously it has a larger AoE circle or pull circle than this guy. And then here, this was another nasty thing because you have two birds, two Dark Hawks patrolling. And if you shot your gun as a warrior at the wrong time, you could have easily chain-pulled those guys, that bird, another bird, like this. If I shot my gun here, it would pull that guy, which would pull that guy, which would pull those guys, and you were dead. So what you were doing is you were waiting, you would shoot your gun, you would run back into this corridor, and then you would kill them here. Same thing. Shoot gun, you know, run there, do thing. Now, it was not very smart to leave those birds around here as you can see <laughs> that was you know th this would be very common you know just mistiming your um, firing firing your gun you know mistiming that led to a chain pull as you can see this guy has a chain lightning effect and a lot of those guys do have a chain lightning spell so that would hurt quite a bit <laughs> and then you had those two guys so we would kill them come on kill them. Now once again we have a dark hawk patrolling so we have to be careful because once again if you shoot at the wrong time you know you will pull those guys and that is not very good it's not very nice. 
And if you pull those guys and ignore this bird, if he was somewhere around here, you would pull those guys that would chain pull to the bird and that would chain pull to those two guys. And you are, at this point, you are pretty much running at the start of the instance and you are trying to get out of the portal before you take durability damage. <laughs> now this boss, in the beginning, very difficult, very difficult indeed, discouraged high damage. Okay, <clears throat> so stuff like cooldowns, that was a no-go on this boss. You know, cooldowns like bloodlust and just personal cooldowns were very ill-advised. They were just a bad idea. I'll show you why if I can. Uh, I don't think I can though. Yeah, I <laughs> just smash him. So what he would do, at certain percentage he would spawn, I think, four elementals. And because you were at in combat at that point, as a warrior it was really hard uh, pretty much impossible to get pull aggro on them. So other people would um, create pull aggro on those and pull aggro was much stronger and it was really hard to get back as a tank. So what you would have to do is to just slowly damage him and then single target the adds down up until, I don't know, when people cleared Serpent Shrine Cavern and they had a lot of um, gear so it, they could just AoE them down but still with certain groups you would have to single target the elementals down and over here I remember going up through here because you always had a druid <laughs> in your group and they always had herbalism so they would pick up flowers so they would always want to go through here and then you ran into those guys preferably this guy has a point. This guy has a blind spot when he is somewhere around here. So if you shoot that guy when this guy is over here, he will not pull. So you only have three guys. And also be really careful about the Cobalt Serpent. Yes, because once you pull the Cobalt Serpent, the rest of those guys runs in. There's one Cobalt Serpent on the stairs. And then there is two guys in front of that hallway. This was fairly simple, nothing too difficult. Just kill them. They die many loots. Eight of Lunacy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, it's a throwback. Now, this... <laughs> these Rippers were annoying as hell. Because just... People saw this many dudes and they went AOE! And they started AOEing and you as a warrior, were you were just fucked. You couldn't tank them. So people were taking damage. They didn't do too much damage, but it was they were still able to kill them. Now, this pack... As you can see, this guy is patrolling over here, and this bird is flying through here. If those two guys align at the wrong time, and you shoot any of those guys, they will chain pull to this bird, which will chain pull to that guy, which will chain pull to those guys, which can chain pull to the rippers. You are dead. <laughs> okay, that was pretty much it. If you pull at the wrong time, it was very hard to hit that window, but it was there, it happened to me a couple of times, where just, I shot my gun, and suddenly the entire room turned around, was like, shiny, and just ran up to me and killed me, pretty much instantly. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Okay, moving on to the next room, this pool, once again, fairly difficult, because you have a bird and you have three guys. I don't think there was a blind spot for this. I don't really, ah, there we go, he's still here. Now, before we go and fight the Raven Lord, aka Anzu, <coughs> this room used to be full of mobs, alright? It used to be full of mobs, like this, and you had to clear the room. Now, Anzu would only show up if you had a druid in your group who had the quest for... Uh, the I think it was the swift flight form. I think it was the second epic one. Now druids would have to go through a quest, and the final part, if I'm not mistaken, would take them here, where they would have to summon Anzu, defeat him, and take his feather to the quest giver. And I think that was the last part of it. Now, if you didn't have a druid, Anzu would not be here. He would just not be here. Okay, the only time you could have fought Anzu, and possibly get the Raven Lord mount, which I do have, is when you had a druid who had this flight form quest. Now what druids would do, the buggers, is they would just not finish this quest and they would keep summoning him. And they would sell these runs to people. Because this was a very rare mount. 
It's fairly rare nowadays, even though you can clearly farm him in Heroic. Um, it was a very rare mount. The drop chance is very low, it's like 1%, and you can't farm this, you can only do this once a day. And back in the Burning Crusade, you could only do it when you had a druid with that quest. So you had to clear the room, and then you had to find Anzu. Now, Anzu would send birds on you, and he would be really freaking annoying. <laughs> it was a really annoying boss. And my inventory is full. I'll just throw this out. <laughs> and that would be it. You would kill Anzu. Also, this room had a lot of nasty packs, and it was once again very easy to die here. There were also dudes over here. I don't know why they're gone. It's probably because Anzu has spawned. And I think Blizzard just moved the phase where these guys are just gone for some reason. Now, Talon King Ikis. He dropped a an epic staff for casters. It actually looked kind of cool. And he would have, well, well two important abilities. He would sheep people, I do believe. So if you were fighting him and he would sheep your healer, that would be a lot, lot of fun. And he also did a very long casted arcane explosion. And that's why you have the four pillars in the room. So he would start casting arcane explosion, he would run behind the pillars, he would explode, and then he would fight him again. Now, unfortunately, yeah, Bloodthirst dead. And I <laughs> didn't even do um, set the course on my warrior. There you go. At least heroic version. Oh, Spoilers of Dementia! Look at that! Well, I'm gonna keep that because those are just too cool. Why? Well, I had them on my warrior. These were the first epic item I got on my warrior in the Burning Crusade. <laughs> I'll just pick all of this up. And we have Turgor. Oh, this is a cool hammer as well. So there you go. Now, one last important thing. Well, kind of two. One last... <laughs> Stop saying one last important thing. Um, there was a box in here. Now, in the Orkin Doom, right here, there is another dungeon called Shadow Labs. Now, I do believe that was the like the highest level dungeon on normal mode. And in front of it, there is a gate. There is a door, and you had to have a key. So you would have to go through set calls, and you would have to loot the key here, I do believe. And the last thing is there is a convenient exit through here. Now, most of the time people would just use hearthstone. But if you didn't have hearthstone, you had to go all the way around, because the tank usually had hearthstone. And it leads to the first big room, where you have mobs. <laughs> so you would have to kill this pack, which is very dangerous, and once again you would shoot gun, run behind this, so they run to you, and they don't pull the group to the right or the group to the left. <laughs> Alright. Now as you can see, I am getting reputation. That is another thing. In the Burning Crusade, you did the normal mode dungeons, and you gained reputations. There were other ways to gain reputation, but until you were um, had, uh, honored with the particular reputation, which in this case is Lower City, you couldn't do heroic mode. You had to buy a key from their vendor in order to allow you to do heroic mode. So that kind of pushed people, okay, we need to do normal mode, so they learned how, how it works on normal mode. They got enough reputation, and then they were ready for heroic mode, which most of the time just kicked their ass because it was really difficult. It was very hard. As a tank, I knew pretty much every pull, how to pull it, what it does. So, yeah. Here is the Raven Lord mount, which you get from Anzu. Very cool. It's the original Raven mount. And just imagine riding on this when everyone has, like, horses and kodos. That was pretty much it. Up until the Nether Drakes came in, you know, you had Kodos, Raptors, and Wolves. That was it. And suddenly you see someone riding on this beauty. And you were like, holy shit, that guy's cool. Because, like, on my server, I think, like, three people had it, and two of them were Alliance. <laughs> so you never saw this mount, because it was so hard to get. The low drop chance and the um, Druid flight form quest requirement just made it almost impossible to get. And when someone had it, they would ride it all day. <laughs> all day. 
I still remember people complaining that he can't fly and you should be able to fly on him because they don't want to ride on fucking griffins or <laughs> whatever. But there you go, that's, that's the Cetic Halls, one of the loveliest dungeons, in my opinion, in the Burning Crusade. And I thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.